lorsqu'ils ont atteint leur dimension et qu'ils sont juste en, bien en place, on va pouvoir ouvrir le, le, le conteneur. C'est parti. This model of a solar-powered sail is being studied as part of GeoSail, a European Space Agency project aimed at exploring a new form of propulsion, photonic propulsion. It's the photons, which are continually in movement, that provide the little push by transferring their energy to the sail, which in turn increases the speed of the vessel. We're in the heart of Europe, the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, a country that's strategically situated between Germany, France and Belgium. Since 2005, Luxembourg has been part of the European Space Agency. A picturesque location is not Luxembourg's only benefit. It's a multicultural country whose half a million inhabitants speak German, French and English, as well as, of course, the national language, Luxembourgish. 27-year-old Sophie Severt is a mechanical engineer. She studied at Luxembourg University's Kirchberg campus, where she met Yves Lehner, a fellow engineer. They both took a course on spatial engineering, but different paths to get to that point. How about you? What university did you go to? I was at Zurich for five years. Last year I obtained my master's. Did you do mechanical engineering? No, I specialized in MEMS, micro-electromechanical systems. Micro-electromechanical systems. Ah, okay. Had he wished, Eve could have studied at Luxembourg University, a young institution which has flourished since opening in 2003. It has several sites and offers a wide variety of scientific and academic courses, with a heavy emphasis on global perspectives and multilingualism. Part of the university's work is dedicated to research, like this study into liquid or solid material components for spectrometric laser analysis. In the interface, the laser beam is completely bent. With the university's funding and support, researchers are able to work on crucial developments for space technology. We are now working to go in the nanometer regime to make near-field on spectroscopy, that is one of our future aims, and that would be more than competitive internationally. At the bottom of a disused mine lies another example of applied research backed by the university. Our two young engineers discover a device working free from any interference. This instrument measures absolute g-force. That means that it really can measure 9.8 meters per second squared with an accuracy up to a billion. The magnetometer measures the speed of gravity on Earth. It can also be used for a variety of other useful studies such as monitoring the movement of tectonic plates. By measuring the Earth's surface, we can make several marks, which will be reference points to confirm the measurements of the Gosset satellite. The magnetometer also has a large part to play in the success of the European Space Agency's Gosset satellite that's aimed at studying the Earth's entire magnetism. Back on Earth, and more precisely the east of the Grand Duchy, we find the small town of Echternach. In its industrial zone lies a medium-sized enterprise that appears to be like any other. This is where Sophie works. Today she's revealing the secrets of the solid and light materials her company makes. These honeycomb structures were initially designed for the aeronautic industry where they're widely used. Solid, lightweight and non-flammable, they were quickly adopted for use in space as their intrinsic properties meet the essential norm. This makes them ideal material for space structures such as satellite solar panels. The material that you see here is specially designed for space because minimizing weight is very important. You see the two types of honeycomb. In the middle, where we need less resistance than the edges, we've put in lighter material. Therefore, it's heavier around the edges where there's more resistance. 
The small and medium-sized enterprises scattered throughout Luxembourg illustrate how the countries moved from heavy industry, most notably iron and steelworks, towards creating an industry based on finding high-tech solutions. Part of the coal and steel industry's legacy has been inherited by the Henri Tudor Public Research Centre, where they test the resistance of materials as in days gone by. But on the next floor up, the scene is completely different. Here, workers use state-of-the-art machines to test the complex materials needed in modern industry. Through analysis and careful inspection, they seek to improve the properties of the samples being studied. This was the case for the ultralight yet solid material used for the solar cell project. It was the subject of comprehensive testing and analysis carried out at Henri Tudor, as well as the Gabrielle Lippmann Public Research Center. In the Lippmann Research Center, we find a battery of strange machines allowing scientists to carry out tests under a range of different conditions, be it extreme temperatures or vacuums. The goal of both centers is the same, to offer industry a wide variety of high-tech systems to guarantee the excellence of products bearing the label made in Luxembourg. This recently erected 13-meter satellite antenna is a perfect case in point. It's dedicated to TT and C, or in other words, telemetry tracking and control. This time, it's Eve's turn to work as a guide to what goes on behind closed doors. We're in the antenna's control center. We can control its two axes. We can move it upwards or move it downwards. This antenna is one half of a pair and part of Luxembourg's latest contribution to one of Europe's most ambitious space programs, the Galileo constellation, the European Global Positioning System. Together, they'll form a vital duo for the monitoring and control of all satellites that will make up the system. Our daily diet of news and information is inextricably linked with television, the medium which no longer knows any bounds thanks to satellite technology. Luxembourg has long been a pioneer in Europe for satellite telecommunications. The network operated by the firm SES Astra is at the forefront of this revolution which began at the end of the last century. It all started back in 1988 when Ariane 4 blasted off with Astra 1A in its payload. The first satellite in what's become widely acknowledged as a real success story. Today, 16 geostationary satellites make up the Astra constellation. From the Burstoff Control Center, a permanent round-the-clock surveillance operation is in place to guarantee the quality of television retransmissions across Europe and beyond. Thousands of young graduates like Sophie and Eve have found Luxembourg to be fertile ground for space activities, a field in full development which requires a large quota of fresh and intelligent minds. Luxembourg is not only at the heart of Europe, it's also a crucial commercial crossroads. By modernizing its industries, the Grand Duchy is now ranked 10th in the world of air cargo transportation and currently has the largest all-cargo airline operating scheduled and charter flights to every continent. Such a volume of traffic requires precise organization backed up by extremely secure information networks. Luxembourg is at the forefront of the fight against computer piracy and fraud, an extra plus in the sensitive domains of the aeronautic and space industries. This highly secure information network is also employed to protect Luxembourg's international banking system, a valuable asset for a country that's the world's second most popular place for investments. That combined with its multicultural environment, leading research and high-tech sectors makes Luxembourg a highly sought-after attraction for potential investors in space technology. For Sophie Eve and plenty of others, Luxembourg is a gateway to space.